you know, back in about like the year 2009, the a, a girl group called The Saturdays uh, wrote a song called Work. Unfortunately, this does not seem to have rubbed off on Chris any which way, shape or form, as you are about to explain. Also, out of interest, the song was basically stating that uh, the girls in the Saturdays have very high standards and that you've got to essentially work to get something that you really, really want, which has a bit of a uh, sexist to uh, in in in, in uh, inclinations involved, but the principle of working to get something you want still stands. That is, if you see women as you know objects, as it were. Anyway, Chris and work. Comments that are truly of good intentions of self-improvement and constructive criticism versus the truly bad intentions of spamming actual hate speech, get a job. I didn't realise uh, get a job is considered hate speech in Chris's world. <clears throat> Chris considers getting a job to be hate speech and commentarily from enablers kissing his ass to be constructive criticism. Well, you know what? You may, you may as well try and take down this video now because apparently telling Chris to get a job is now considered hate speech. Chris is infamous for his laziness and his dependence on his elderly parents. Parent, singular. Which inhibits him from wanting to work. He briefly held one job, two if pushing it, in his early 20s, but was unsurprisingly fired from them fairly quickly. Despite his crippling debt, Chris vehemently refuses to even attempt to obtain any kind of employment whatsoever, due to wanting to prematurely live like a child, a stance that has become so potent that he believes that struggling is it to him should be de deemed as hate speech. Thus, as shown on the Wikipedia's main page, it has been, as of this date, 4,139 days, more than 11 years since Chris has last applied for a job. And if we will go one further and we we'll see if that holds up to today. Uh, oh, that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, four sorry, four thousand one hundred and forty-three days. And so when was this? So basically four days ago. But still, that is appalling by any any stretch of the imagination. I hit I hit the mic there. With reasons, oh, by the way, also, I can't uh, miss this out. Chris doing anything that doesn't revolve around daydreaming over his fantasies. You know what's quite interesting, actually, about this is that Chris, in the past, used to refer to the Bible quite a lot and usually uh, condemning people for without any in, in reference whatsoever. It's uh, apparent that also Chris, whether or not he actually has read the Bible is a very good question in itself. But he certainly probably missed out uh, the book of Job. I know it's pronounced Job, but for the sake of this joke, I, I thought it was funny and I continued anyway. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, this article section is incomplete due to stress. Pro tip, please stop telling Chris to get a job. It's abundantly clear that he's not going to, no matter how many times you ask him to. Or can I just ask him like once more? Even if he did decide to find employment, it's pretty much too late due to his poor qualifications for many college degree careers. And any employer with even the most basic of background checking skills would find that his online infamy that would make him highly undesirable as an employee. I'm not, well, I've worked with, uh, guys, When I've done jobs before where I've uh, also, where people who are applying for work and people who actually did get work have not exactly had great backgrounds either. Some of them have done far more serious crimes than the things that Chris has done, but the it's everything else, you, you might say. External factors. Parental influence. Chris's parents, but more so Bob, had encouraged him to not be employed, which I find insane. Believing that his social security disability insurance, his SSDI payments, is all he really needs to support himself. A belief that has ultimately proven to be false with the advent of the financial tube crisis. Negative experiences with workers and managers. While Chris has not lived a particularly good life unemployed, 
He has also had some bad experiences with the employees and managers of several of the places he frequented, which further shows some of Chris's views on what it means to be employed. The way he has treated such people provides insight into Chris's delusional ideas about the role of an employee. It is a manager's duty to take action in difficult situations, like if a customer is loitering or causing a disturbance. Two things that Chris has done many, many times in the past. Chris, however, unaware of how he should act in public places, only saw such actions as a form of discrimination, solely to keep him from doing as he pleases, whether it be soliciting a girlfriend or vandalising merchandise or property. These views are also apparent in some of his comics, where he depicts the employees and managers that have given him a hard time as co corrupt tyrants abusing their power. Chris has also had negative experiences with more security guards. Chris's runs in with the law have never been pleasant, and even though Chris does not exactly view workers and law enforcement in the same light, law enforcers are still technically employed by some organisation, on various occasions. Chris has been shown to bolt out of a gain stop in fear when security is called, suggesting a fear of security guards, like stemming from previous experiences. Financial enablers. In the wake of the idea, guys, Chris's enabling has gone far beyond just his mother. Chris now has amounts of fans, of admiring fans, if whatever, that are willing to give him loads of money in order to support him. Internal factors. Autism. <coughs> Sorry about that. Chris believing he is an omnipotent and omniscient goddess doesn't have time for such frivolous things as working to make a living. That statements like that almost make my blood boil. Not not at the quickie, but at Chris, because that is genuinely his mindset. In October 2017, Chris claimed that he was too busy with Quickville and his imaginary friends, in addition to helping Bob and the pets. In June 2019, Chris claimed that he was already employed by God to oversee the dimensional merge. Additionally, ever since Chris's transition, he feels that finding a job runs the risk of being discriminated against for his Tom girl gender. This is despite the fact that discrimination on the basis of gender is illegal, especially as a result of a Supreme Court ruling on the 15th of June 2020. I'll say again, I've worked with people who are transgender. I've also worked with people who were gay, people who... from I've worked with a lot of people from almost every single walk of life, and I have never had one, one issue with any single one of them. And there was no chance of discrimination anyway, because the second there was trouble, that person would have been seen to fired or some very harsh reprimand, probably being fired as well. In a moment of self-awareness, Chris fears being incompetent at work, and he claimed in May 2018 that he feared the weans and A-logs will harass him at work, similar to how they harassed the management of the end games and Anytime Fitness into banning him. However, even though significantly more mentally ill or otherwise disabled can find work, that is 100% true as well. Meaning, Chris, I mean, guys, I've been to university. I've would be, I've been uh, and communicated with people who are significantly less fortunate than Chris. There was this one guy, right, who uh, I don't know if it was either in a uh, computer studies uh, department, which was kind of like on the other side of the street from where I uh, was studying. This guy had to be assisted in a wheelchair, and I think he had, a, I think it was like motor, some kind of like motory uh, disability, where it was very difficult for him to, you know, move his limbs. But even so, you know what? He was a university student. He fucking was one of the most bang on guys I met there, and I've worked with people, lecturers who were who had dyslexia, were far more inept and competent at what they did. In fact, y you don't just get the job of being, you know, a, a lecturer. They don't just hand stuff like that out to you. And again, they don't discriminate against these sort of things in any way, shape or form. That is, that's an, abs that's an insane thing to suggest anyway. I even remember on one occasion back in the end of 2017, we had this professor from the University of Colombo in Sri Lanka who came to uh, oversee stuff for a whole week because I think of some, because uh, I think he ran an animation department in the University of Colombo. And he was, uh, he was a lovely man. So, no, 
there, there were places like this. There were things like this in the workplace where, you know, they say stuff like, I mean, one thing I have at work is they say the phrase is sexual discrimination is a union uh, discrimination issue as well. We have the stuff like that in place to specifically protect Chris, who be who being Tongo or transgender or whatever it is, he would have been protected anyway because you could take corporations or places to court if they refuse you on the basis of gender discrimination. Unfortunately, when it comes to Chris, it's not gender discrimination. That why he's being refused to accept to give him work. Far from it. In a moment of self-awareness, Chris feels being incompetent at work and he claimed in May 2018 that he feared that Weens and A-Logs will harass him at work. Uh, mentally ill or prepared to work, meaning that Chris can quickly find easy work if he really wanted to. This shows that Chris will pull any idea out of his ass to avoid having to get him off it and contribute to society. Past stance on employment. In the past, Chris has shown some degree of interest in pursuing a career, but only for his personal gain, rather than so that he can move out of his parents' house and obtain the degree all self-sufficiently, for example. Although he expressed an interest in becoming a comic book artist, either working for Archie or DC, I think they might have mentioned like Marvel as well, he has also stated when he completes his love quest that he would stay at home while his wife works showing that Chris has somewhat hesitant even before then. Other sources point to Chris believing that obtaining a job is only necessary to pick up a girlfriend, which is evident when he decided to take up a job in Cutco Cutlery at the beginning of his love quest. Chris' key insight into Chris's attitude towards job hunting is found in his resume, which has not been updated in over a decade. Chris shows he did not understand what constitutes work experience, let alone its importance. For example, he believes that doing volunteer work for the Pokemon leagues at the game place counts as work experience. In reality, mere volunteer work does not typically catch the eye of most employers. Also, Chris was not a gym leader as he claimed, but rather was a substitute when the actual gym leader was not available. Finally, even if this could be taken into account, what experience he obtained is likely negligible, as he had no authority over the players and was, in fact, carefully supervised by the staff. In the same resume, he cites his production of comics as work experience, despite the fact that he was not doing this in a professional setting, and the product itself leaves a lot to be desired. The resume also shows that, in his entire adult life, not even a fraction of his time was spent on an actual job let alone one that is full-time, is in a professional environment. Counting all of the positions he had that did not involve being a gym leader's assistant, or working on his Sonichu comics, his total work experience amounts to a grand total of six months at most. This estimate is generous because while he claimed to have worked at Wendy's for three months on his resume, he also claimed that he was already fired on September 11th to Casey's father. Please note that this was only across an entire two-year gap between working each of the two positions he held. I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I won't come back to this later. I'm going to mention this right now. Um, you know what? Three months of... Uh, he claimed to have worked at, you know, uh, at Wendy's and six months of work experience, of, you know, quote-unquote, you know, um, what, what do they call this again? Like, volunteer work. So... Not, not counting volunteer work because he didn't get paid for it. He spent three months basically in work. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to disclose to you right now. Well, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll wait. But three months. And people have said it's it's something like six months. But if it is, well, I've got some, uh, I've got some news I want to share to you guys when we get to the end of this. List of jobs in Dimension 1218. Wendy's. The first place Chris attempted to work was at his local Wendy's. While there, his primary duties were custodial in nature rather than food preparation or direct customer interaction. Despite painting himself as an employee that serves the customers with kind, understanding help, accounts from other employees and customers have shown him to be a rude and difficult employee to work with. Cutco Cutlery 
The second and final job that Chris claims to have worked was through Cutco Cutlery, a multi-level marketing company that primarily sells overpriced knives. The company itself is deemed to be a notorious borderline scam that generally targets high school students, college students and gullible idiots like Chris with no work experience. Chris claims to have lost this job after his boss left at summer's end. Chris had obtained this job during the beginning of his love quest, which also showcases that Chris believed getting a job is only for people who want to have a girlfriend, even believing that having the job just magically improved his social skills. This job alone, believe it or not, was what made him into the person himself to be a natural salesperson. After this job, Chris would go out of his way to produce his attraction signs. Other employers. Besides Wendy's and Cutco, Chris has attempted to apply for a handful of other jobs to no avail, and has also held positions he believed signified employment, but was actually mere community service. And that's it. That's, his, that's all the work Chris has ever done in his life. Three months... He called it at Wendy's and goodness knows how long at Cutco. Uh, when did he say it started again? Like, oh, never mind. But current stance on employment. Oh, here we go. Uh, therefore, for all of you hate away chugging get a job spouters out there, I suggest you shut up and enjoy your ability to settle in a cozy office or wherever. Uh, first off, shouldn't Chris, you know get banned because you know this constitutes hate speech as well so he can't use the phrase either for the rest of us the worlds and the dimensions are our offices but we are doing our best so we can reach our respective faded destined promotions but i digress chris claiming he's already employed in an alternate dimension whatever that means or how come you know this doesn't display your chris being any richer or any more successful Considering how trolls, weens, enablers, and quite frankly, Chris himself has completely managed to destroy his background check over the years, it is little wonder why he has lost any hope of obtaining a job. Chris even stated he was fully aware of this in a Facebook post he made on the 3rd of April 2017. In the same post, however, he also claims that he would still refuse to obtain a job anyway, even without all of the crazy shit that has happened in his life. He claims to fear the possibility of being discriminated against for being autistic, transgender, and having a lesbian soul. In the modern workforce, however, this misgiving is highly unjustified, as any kind of discrimination based on gender, disability, or sex is usually frowned upon in the workforce, exactly, and leaves the employer liable for legal action or federal state sanctions fines besides the former two reasons. Chris claimed that gaining employment would be redundant, as he believes taking care of his aging parents actually counts as employment, despite not being paid for said employment. Job as a goddess. Chris now appears to believe that his true occupation at the moment is being the goddess of an alternate dimension. Thanks to the influence of the idea guys, Jacob Sockless and several other influencers, in the span of two years after the aforementioned Facebook post, Chris would state on at least two occasions that he believes that the ability to support himself financially by working a job is completely useless. What planet is Chris living on? As a matter of fact, in one of these occasions, he had actually stated that he is far too enlightened and above societal expectations to actually obtain a job. But is apparently to continue living in filth, simply due to an absurd comparison he makes between the amount of time the universe will exist for against how much time he would work at a job, as evident in the same post, as well as in a subsequent one. He actually believes that obtaining a job would not be mandatory. I'm sorry, what? And even goes as far as to state that the citizens of Quickville are not required to obtain a job. Well, it's, well, maybe we should just count it lucky that, you know, Quickville is only fictional anyway, and... Can Chris get a real-life job now? No, let's move on. Many observers have admitted that it is far, far too late for Chris to get a job now. 
In addition to his various runs in with the law and his local reputation for public tantrums and violence, Chris is over 38 years old, with only one bad month of employment back in 2001, a worthless CAD certificate, a brief MLM stint, and over a decade of unsavoury information about him on the internet. Chris has also not applied for a job since September 2009, and his sonitude laden resume is long out of date. Even if Chris did get a job, there is a good chance that wannabe weens and A-logs will harass his employer into terminating him, similar to how they harassed the management of the End Games and Anytime Fitness into banning him. In short, Chris claims that he can never get a job may be true, albeit for different reasons. Nearly all employees are unwilling to tolerate a person with that kind of background. I mean, yeah, or the or Chris could do uh, something else and just straight up drop all information on the internet entirely, and you know what, just never tell anybody anything on the internet ever again. That would be a good reason to to, to for Chris to get a job if he, and because people would just leave him alone. That's one thing he could try. Chores. I work hard for my father when it's golden. I pull weeds. <coughs> Those weeds are very hard to pull. Chris telling a former US Marine about the heavy burdens in his life. Aside from a few part-time jobs from which he got fired shortly after being accepted, way to go Chris, Chris is also responsible for doing certain chores around the household. To him, chores are menial tasks that Bob forces him to perform for her. Since these chores are the closest thing in Chris's life resembling actual work, and one of the few things taking him away from his video games. Going into deep thought about other dimensions and attending BronyCon, they are a frequent source of stress and complaining for Chris. On the, one, on the other hand, Chris also sees these chores as nothing more than to prove that he is not lazy. In which case, he believes these chores are a good example of what a hard-working, respectable, high-functioning autistic he really is. Chris loves chores. That thing had to weigh like 5-10 tons of Paddy Chandler's doghouse. Chris's most notorious mention of his chores is in The Father Call, where he desperately tries to prove to his worthiness to Matthew Devoria, by listing some of the hard work he has done around the house, such as sitting on a riding lawnmower, moving chairs, and carrying a doghouse across the yard. In fact, many of the chores he whines about are things he only did literally once and never again. He also compares his pulling weeds in the hot, hot sun to war veterans Matt's time served in the Gulf War. Chris does not limit himself to only doing chores in real life. Oh no. He also enjoys spending hours upon hours performing virtual chores in Animal Crossing. These are his favourite chores to do, because not only is he able to sit on his fat ass all day long tapping at his controller, he is also rewarded for performing these tasks. As well as this sounds by his early 30s, it seems to just be another part of Chris's daily routine. At one point, telling Julie that he had to take a break from his computer to get his chores done in Axe City Folk, he eventually stopped doing these chores altogether after his GameCube disintegrated in the 2014 fire. Bob working in the garden on the verge of a fourth heart attack. Oh no. Although I must say his daily in the garden actually looks, in the summer, looks really nice. I, I'll commend him for that. In Chris's other favourite fictional world, Quickville, Sonichu also does his share of the housework as Chris elaborately explained in his Wikipedia bio. Between fighting evildoers and saving the world from homosexuality, he even finds time to mow the lawn with his loyal wife, Rose Chew. After the kids have been sent off to school, Sonichu and Rose Chew go out and vacuum to the extreme. Chris, on the other hand, is far too busy with his mayoral duties to worry about chores, so instead he makes his secretary, Alison Amber, do literally all of the work. Chris dreams of one day being a house husband, doing chores for his wife and daughter at home all day, while the wife goes to work and earns money for the family. This should be evidence enough to suggest why Chris will never, ever, ever have a wife. 
In a chat with Clyde Cash, Clyde questions Chris's ability to take care of himself and his sweetheart. This causes uh, Chris to go on for what seems like an hour, listing all the chores he is capable of performing around the house. He is very proud of his ability to load dishes into the dishwasher and put garbage into a trash can. Wow. Chris now... Chris... I, Chris reminds me of the sort of person who would say eating generally is a hard labour in itself. <clears throat> Despite these many difficult, stressful, backbreaking chores that Chris spends his time doing, the Chandler, the Chandler family's household was still a disgusting pigsty that Bob falsely believed was on the verge of being condemned by the Green County Health Department before it actually burned down. The fire was being exasperated by the mountains of junk held inside. In a call with Alec Benson Leary, when this conundrum is pointed out to Chris, he desperately mashed the buttons on his phone and hung up to try and get out of explaining himself. Grand. Do you also think a woman would be interested in Chris if he did something like that? No. Chris hates chores. Chris spends a lot of time trying to avoid doing what he is so proud of. Barbara constantly gets Chris to do things for her. This sometimes drags him away from his friends, love life and other businesses. He has also hidden out at the mall for hours just so his mother's demands that he do a hefty chore wouldn't disrupt his creative genius. He also blames Bob for his house being so messy in the first place. His usual go-to excuse for the state of his house is to call her a pack rat even having the balls to call her lazy for not cleaning anything up. Barbara apparently leaves junk lying all over the house, but Chris would rather go days without showering than figure out how to move some of Barbara's junk to another room, claiming he doesn't know what to do with any of it. Chris's parents also make him pay for the family bills, possibly as an attempt to make him feel like a real adult. Chris, of course, complains about having to give up large percentage of his tugboat for these bills. I'm going to come on to this in a second as well. He puts off paying them for as long as possible so he can use his hard-earned money for more important necessities. In one of her rare mumble appearances, Chris lied to Barbara about paying the bills for that month, at first whining that he was being honest, but eventually gave in to the fear of being punished by his mother and admitted he did not pay all of them. But... He will be sure to pay the remaining differences next month. I move stuff around. I take the vacuum cleaner. I vacuum. I scrub the floors with four, 409 and paper towels. It's really hard work. Back breaking. Chris explains why he hasn't had time to work on his comic. In 2020, Chris said that he and Bob both do equal amounts of chores. Despite Bob being aged nearly 80. I think she's 78 years old. Wow. Just wow. Indeed. So that's technically the end of Chris and work, but I am not finished. 